Hi there, Chris Simbar. Today we're going to talk about a simple race. Most people don't realize there are six factors that determine who is going to win a race. Let's talk about the six factors very quickly. First of all, the pip count. How many little dots you need on the dice to get your checkers from here to here. Uh, the average roll is a little bit over eight and here he has 84 so it should take a little bit over 10 rolls uh, assuming there's no doubles and so on but that's a very a simple way and in the past many people used to say if they were up by 10 percent they can double if they're in 12 percent they can take or vice versa which was um, uh, not a bad general rule for longer races but not very inefficient uh, but of course the fewer pips you have the more likely you are to win the race. Who is on roll is a major factor. You take two identical uh, positions and the one who's on roll has got a roll, roll advantage. He's certainly going to win the race. Distribution is going to matter and I'll illustrate that in just a minute. Uh, many people don't realize that the um, the location of the cube is going to matter and I was going to illustrate that first right now. In this case, as you can see from the Extreme Gammon Evaluation++, plus plus, if red were to double, uh, blue will win this game 30.88% of the time. Now, this is cubeless. This means that if uh, this was DMP, or there was, a, which is double match point, where there's no cube involved, and you played the game all the way out to the end without ever using the cube, blue would win this game 30.88% of the time according to Extreme Gammon, it would be slightly wrong to double here. Part of the reason it's wrong is because uh, you're, you're not likely to get a drop. The major reason it's wrong is you're not likely to get a drop on the next roll unless red rolls extremely well and blue rolls extremely poorly. Uh, blue would be taking next time, so why give him the cube? So the market losers are not there, and that's the major reason. Uh, I generally use the Keith count or EPC in positions like this and, and not quite in far enough for me to use EPC well so I would use the Keith count here which also tells me that it's not a double uh, but here's the big uh, point here um, if you did give blue the cube in a race of this long blue's winning chances go up by about one-sixth that's the power of the cube in a race what do I mean by one-sixth if you divide 30 by six you get five that means that blue would win about 35 percent instead of 30 percent that's how you apply that factor why does blue win more if he's holding the cube well if he's holding the cube he's got the cube vig he's got the power of the cube in a money game or a longer match score where that the take points are like money uh, or like unlimited games um, the if you if blue gets the cube he can redouble and let's say blue gets to the point where he can win the game 80% of the time. Let's say he rolls well. He redoubles, red has to pass, and blue wins. And he wins a game that he would have lost 20% of the time if he didn't have the cube. At the same time, because blue gives red the cube, what happens if blue gets to be an 80% favorite? He's still going to lose 20% of the time. So that's one reason why blue is going to win more often because he's holding the cube. The other reason is what happens when blue gets to, say, 72, 73, 74 percent, something in, in the range between 70 and 80 percent, and he redoubles, and red has a take. Even there, even though he doesn't win the game at that point, he's going to win more points. He's going to win four points on those games most of the time. Not all the time. He'll win maybe 73 or 74 percent of the time. But the extra points that he wins gives him value as well. And Blue is going to lose more points in those situations because even though he has a take, he's still going to lose more points in the long run. So there's power in holding the cube and that's how you measure the power. Now this one-sixth power doesn't go up by very much in a, if the race gets much longer. There's a point of diminishing returns. But as the race gets shorter, the, then it's not worth quite as much because the closer you are to the end and the fewer rolls there are, the less opportunity there is for the taker to get in a recube. Uh, you know, when you give the cube, uh, after the cube is taken, three things can happen. You can roll about the same, in which case the one who gave the cube, assuming he was right to give the cube, uh, is going to win. Or 
the one who gave the cube is going to roll better and he's going to win. So the only way that the taker is going to win is if he rolls better. That's the third thing that can happen. So if blue roll, blue has to roll better than red in order to win, uh, and the more rolls there are, the more chance there is for that to happen, the more chance he has to roll doubles or roll high numbers and catch up. So uh, that's the, the theory uh, from that part of it. Uh, the um, fifth element, see, let's see, we had pip count, distribution, who's on roll, the length of the race. Ah, the fifth element is the skill. There is, a, there is skill even here in playing your checkers and burying them in and burying them off. Even without contact, you can make mistakes. So if one player plays better than the other or uh, moves his checkers more efficiently and properly, uh, then he will uh, win more for that reason. And of course, the last thing that's going to determine is who gets the better rolls, who who has the uh, uh, who who gets the the right swing. A lot of people call it luck. Some people call it the, the swing in the odds. Uh, but who gets better rolls is certainly going to determine who's going to win. All right, let's let's take a look at a couple of other factors very quickly. I mentioned the the length of the race is going to matter. Uh, let's take two identical positions. And this length, uh, this race is 57 to 57. Obviously, red is favored because he's on roll, uh, and he is a 63% favorite. That's how huge it is to be on roll in this position. Red will win this game 63% of the time. Now, shorten the race. Give them both identical positions. Here's a position you're, not, you're never going to see, but it illustrates the point. All the checkers on the ace point versus all the checkers on the ace point. And it's, it's an extreme example, but it gets the point across. In this position, now red wins doesn't win 63% of the time. He wins 67% of the time. Why did his odds go up from 63 to 67? Why does he win more? This is, by the way, a small double. The other one wasn't a double. It goes up because the third thing that can happen, that blue rolls better than red, is going to happen less. There's less rolls now because the pip count is less. And the only way that blue can roll better than red is to roll more doubles. It doesn't matter if blue rolls sixes and fives and red rolls ones and twos, they're of equal value. If red rolls a double one and blue rolls a double six, they're of equal value. So the only way that blue wins is by rolling more doubles. And since he rolls second, even if he rolls uh, doubles and red doesn't, red gets another shot at it unless it's on the last roll. So for all those reasons, the length of race you can see has a major effect. But we talked about distribution having an effect on the game. Let's go back and again, let's make a equal position. Okay, uh, the pip count is 55 to 55. Red is on roll and red wins 63.8 percent of the time. I'm going to change the distribution. Remember, 63.8 percent of the time. Let's open up red's five point. Instead of 63.8 percent of the time, with the same pip count, he only wins 55 percent of the time. That's because he's going to waste and miss every time he rolls a five. And he has this bigger stack here. So distribution is going to play into it. Also, uh, part of what you'll learn if you learn the Keith count or the Trice count and other formulas is there's wastage when you put too many checkers on the one and the two point. I won't get into that in a great deal detail right now. So I, I recommend you learn racing formulas, but you needed to learn the theory that goes behind it because the theory comes into play a lot more than you think. Let me show you an interesting position again that illustrates the point very well. Uh, red is on roll here and has a 5-2 to play. Uh, he is up four pips before the roll. And of course, he can play quietly and bring in two checkers, or he can gamble uh, on the hit to win. And the answer is uh, that with seven plus four, he'd be up 11 pips in a 62 pip race that he doesn't need to hit. He's going to win this game more often by racing than by hitting. If he hits, he could get hit back. Even if he doesn't get hit back, he might not be able to cover next time. He could leave a shot the second time, and it's not worth the risk of hitting. So it's better to play the race. 
and it hitting would be a 0.069 error, roughly. We'd have to roll it out to be sure. But it's he's going to win the game. Uh, and of course, there's gammons involved, too. I'm sorry. It's not just wins. Uh, it's also gammons involved. If you hit uh, and you get hit back, you could get gammon, and that adds to the equation. Um, let's give the cube on blue side identical position. Now it's right to hit. Why? Because in a race blue has more winning chances holding the cube. He can use the cube efficiently. He doesn't necessarily gain one six. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But the fact is that if uh, that if you let blue play the game out with a race, uh, he can gradually get to the point where he has a, a, a cube in that 70 to 80 percent range where uh, get, getting the cube either wins him a lot more points or actually wins him the game when he could have lost a lot. But if you hit, uh, the cube doesn't have much value because he either loses the game or if he hits, he's probably got the game won such a huge percentage of the time anyway that by using the cube he didn't gain that much. So because of the cube vig or the cube power in this identical position, it's about a 10% error not to hit. Um, and by the way, uh, DMP, which is double match point, click the DMP button, it's going to be right to hit simply because you win more often. It, you just If you played this game out to the end with no cubes and you didn't hit, you'd win 59% of the time. By hitting, you hit 63% of the time. But you can see that where the cube was in a money game and in match play at 11 away, 11 away, it would be the exact same thing. Uh, it's important to to take in the cube vig that you have or the power of holding the cube in a race being so much greater uh, it isn't going to be anywhere near the one sixth uh, with its hitting game uh, by holding the cube and that is another thing when you're in a back game and you're thinking about taking the cube or in a game that the only way you're going to win is probably by getting a shot you don't have a one sixth it isn't, doesn't give you that much power now the cube power could be even more than that and it could be uh, depending on the score, but I'm talking about it at what we call a normal match score or money game. I hope this gives you some insights into the theory of the cube in races and the theory of races. And uh, if you knew all of this already, then you're probably a pretty good player. And if you didn't know all of it or some of it's new to you, you need to do some study. And if you don't know the cube about EPC, uh, or the Trice formula, or some uh, or Ward, Kleinman, there are several other uh, tools that help you decide when to cube in a race properly. Then, you, again, you need to do some study if you want to catch up with uh, good players like me who know this stuff. I've got an edge on, on you because I know this stuff and you don't. So just to, just to get to a level of playing field, when we get to a race when you're playing uh, an open player, virtually all open players know this and most intermediates, many intermediates, have some good formula to use. You need to learn it too. Hope this was helpful to you. This is a video gratis of the USPGF. I have over 150 that have been posted that are exclusive to the USPGF members. One of the benefits of joining is you can see all of these videos, and there's many other benefits of joining. Um, so please do if you're not a member, and uh, you'll see a lot more uh, tools and learning tools and learn a lot more about the game through the USBGF, uh, through our magazine, and through. Uh, our blog and many other ways. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.